हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज रुद्री पाठक फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल टेक्नोलॉजी एल जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी अहमदाबाद टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट आवर सेकंड लेक्चर ऑन कैप्सूल दैट इज हार्जलेट इन कैप्सूल इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट सॉफ्ट इन कैप्सूल्स एंड हाउ आर दीज प्रिपेयर यूजिंग रूटरी डाई प्रोसेस वी विल बी कंपेयरिंग हार्जलेट इन कैप्सूल्स एंड सॉफ्ट इन कैप्सूल्स we will also be comparing hydrolated capsules with other unit dosage form at a start so let's have a look at hydrolated capsules so basically what are capsules uh, let's forget about hydrolated capsules and soft gelatin capsules at this point of time but basically capsules are enclosed dosage form if we talk about capsules and tablets these two are the fundamental conventional solid oral unit dosage form so there has to be comparison between these two dosage forms now capsules are enclosed dosage form as compared to tablets which is a compressed dosage form so that is the major difference between these two basic fundamental conventional dosage forms. now there are certain advantages of hydrolated capsules as compared to tablets basically in case of capsules all the ingredients are enclosed in the shell which is usually made up of gelatin so these are not compressed and particles of the api particles of the excipients are not in close contact with each other so that goes without saying there will be minimum chances of contamination there will be minimum chances of interaction or incompatibility because the excipients that you are using they are much far away from each other so they are not going to interact also you will have n number of variety available if we talk about tablets there will be some limitation about the number of apis that you are going to use and that you are going to compress you need to check whether all of them are compressible or not when in case of capsules you can administer more than 2 api more than two excipients easily that is why we call it multi particulate dosage also the surface of capsule is smooth so that makes it easier for certain patients to swallow and that is a very major and important advantage capsules are usually economical dosage form as compared to any other ndds products now there are certain ideal characteristics of capsules we are claiming all the advantages but there has to be certain uh, thoughts or certain characteristics which needs to be kept in mind when we are talking about capsule there should be minimum contact or minimum interaction between the dosage form and the shell otherwise there are chances that the shell which is made up of gelatin it may react with the products or the products may deteriorate the characteristics of the shell the second important characteristic is the product should be released in the intended area the gelatin should be dissolved in any of the juice whether we are talking about digestive juices or the juices where you want to release your product it should dissolve in that particular area and the contents should be released that is when what we are claiming about its release characteristics that is going to happen otherwise that's not possible okay the next important point is it has to be economical because capsules require stricter environmental controls as compared to tablets there has to be strict environmental control of moisture as well as temperature when we are manufacturing capsules so it is required that the overall procedure should be economical and that should not be that much expensive to make it uh, unaffordable for majority class of people or pharmaceutical companies now let's talk about the formulation part of empty gelatin capsule now when we are talking about empty gelatin capsule the gelatin is the most important and integral part of preparation of capsule shell whether we are talking about hard gelatin capsules or soft gelatin in both the cases gelatin is really very important now usually gelatin is prepared from animal sources that is pork 
or animal bones and the material tissue or collagen obtained from these sources can be treated by two techniques. Now, depending on the type of treatment of gelatin, it can be classified into type A gelatin and type B gelatin. If the gelatin is treated with an acid, then it makes it type A gelatin. And if the gelatin is treated with a base, then it will be converted into type B gelatin. Not only this, the isoelectric pH of these gelatins are important and it is considered very important part of examination. If we are talking about type A gelatin, then its isoelectric pH will be towards the basic side, that is around 9, 9.5. And if we are talking about base treated gelatin, that is type B gelatin, then its isoelectric pH will be around 3 or 4. Please take a note. Now, what are the basic steps involved in preparation of hard gelatin capsule? Just the capsule shell as such. Now, there are seven basic steps as you can see in the picture. There are seven basic steps involved in preparation of hard gelatin capsules as such. Once these hard gelatin capsules are prepared, then it can be filled with variety of formulations ranging from pellets and powders then even tablets that depends on the kind of uh, product that we want to manufacture but the preparation of the hard gelatin capsule shell will remain like this it is going to be common for all the formulation okay so let's have a look at each and every step that we are going to uh, utilize for preparation of hard gelatin capsule the first and the most important step is dipping so there will be some uh, pins which are made up of stainless steel. Now you need to imagine that there can be a base, okay? And to that base, various pins are attached. Imagine this pin to be your pin. Now imagine these pins are attached to a base. Okay? Everything is made up of stainless steel to avoid any chances of contamination or corrosion. So these are attached like this. Now what will happen when these pins in the first step they need to be dipped in the gelatin solution. Now this gelatin solution are maintained at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Point to be noted in these uh, solutions there will be gelatin, glycerine and water that will be combination of three ingredients. Remember we talked about this in preparation of soft gelatin capsule also. All three of them will go together. Glycerin will act as plasticizer, water will act as your vehicle. So all three of them will work together. Okay. So in the first step, these uh, stainless steel pins are going to be dipped in the gelatin solution. So what will happen? The gelatin will start sticking on the surface of the pin. Now in the next step, not just dipping is enough, we want to have even distribution of gelatin solution over the pins. You need to have an even distribution, that is when the capsule shell will be of even thickness, obvious. So these pins are spinned in all the direction. Now that is going to throw the excess of gelatin layers on the outer side and it is going to make an even layer on the surface of the pin. Now once this is done, uh, once the pins are dipped and spinned, then they are going to dry. Now what is that going to do? Obviously, you need to control the overall water content in the gelatin shell. So this particular drying step is going to control the level of water which is available in the gelatin shell. Simple. The next part is stripping. We want to have a proper shape of capsule, right? So the uh, pins which were dipped with gelatin solution are now evenly distributed, distributed and then they are dried. Now you need to scrap it off so that it can have a shape of capsule. So you will scrap it or strip it remove the part of gelatin which has taken the shape of pins right so that is stripping in the next step what we are going to do is we need to have the exact 
shape and size of capsule that we want to manufacture depending on the dose of API obviously. So the next part will be trimming. So the stripped gelatin layers now are now trimmed depending on the size that we want to manufacture. We are going to talk about size of gelatins also, uh, capsules also, hard gelatin capsules. So depending on the type of capsule that we want to manufacture, they will be trimmed and will be converted into required shape. Now, uh, one thing needs to be noted that the pins are dipped and they will be preparing two parts of capsules. There are two parts of capsules, base and the cap. So the base and the cap which are prepared in the steps, they will be ligated now, they will be joined and then they will be polished and excess of uh, water content will be now removed and then they will be labeled or stamped with the logo if at all it is needed depending on the manufacturing company okay so i think you are clear with the steps that is uh, dipping then spinning then drying then scrapping then trimming and then they are joined and then additional steps are actually performed so this is a diagrammatic representation of how it is actually going to take place. The pins are dipped, they are spinned, then they will be dried, then uh, they will be scrapped roughly and then they will be trimmed. Then the base and the cap are going to be joined and then it can be uh, embossed or it can be printed with the logo of the company depending on the kind of manufacturing. So, a uh, variety of capsule sizes are available in market depending on the steps that we used in our previous slides there are variety of sizes available in the market usually the capsule size starts from triple zero and it is up to five now triple zero size is for wet use for animal use usually for human use it starts from zero to five now depending on the size of capsule it has certain fill capacity size triple zero is the largest fill capacity size phi is the smallest fill capacity now depending on the size obviously you can have a fill capacity that is how much amount of volume can be incorporated in i have put a table for you which shows that what is the fill capacity of a particular size of capsule depending on which size of capsules that we are going to select a particular amount can be incorporated inside these capsules so that's all for today's session we talked about what are the advantages of hydrolate and capsules in brief we talked about their advantages then we talked about what are the different steps involved in preparation of hydrolating capsule shells, just the shells. We didn't talk about filling that we are going to talk about in our later presentation. Then we also summarized what are the various sizes of capsules available in the market. You need to note down that table. That table is extremely important for uh, MCQ examination or GPET or any other examination. That table is important uh this videos or this sessions are featured in our youtube channel that is pharma ignite i would like to repeat and i would like to mention to all of you to kindly subscribe and share these channels and uh, you need to be um, aware and alert about the upcoming videos as well thank you so much for your patient hearing and time have a nice day